Hi, ladybugs. I'm a couple minutes early, so we can give everyone time to get here. I'm Victoria from Old Tulala Art. Let me take care of some business here. Okay. Say hi when you get here if you'd like to. I'm just going to give it a minute or two because I am early. Give everyone a chance to get here. <clears throat> Happy. Hi, Sheila. Okay, we're going to get started. So today I'm using the conservatory mold. I'm using apothecary label stamps and we're going to make um, garden markers which are really cute. I got the idea from the sisters. They did some black and white ones but I'm putting my own little spin on it. We're going to make ours terracotta. Hi Claire. Hi Mary. So the first thing I did was I made my mold out of the hot glue. You've seen me do it a million times. When you're unmolding, see here, that means the uh, glue is still kind of wet. You always push from the back and you'll see it turn. If it turns opaque easily with no problem, that means it's ready to go. Okay, so that's ready to go. And here's the one that we're going to use. I used this one down from the, the big foofy one. I used this one down for, for this particular class. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, hi Sandy, I'm going to check my mold for little fuzzies or uneven edges and sometimes I'll just take and I'll trim them if I need to. Most of the time it's not even a matter of doing that. Most of the time, I take the edge of my hot glue gun and I just kind of run it along here and make that super smooth. Then I'll come back in with my hand and kind of, then I get a really nice smooth, if I need to. I don't always need to. And that hasn't made it so hot that I can't touch it. I'm just kind of, uh, you're just kind of smoothing. It's like a knife going through butter. A little rough on that edge, so I think you can just smooth everything right out. And then I just kind of push it with my hand. So now that's all nice and smooth. Okay. Hi, Lori. Hi, Mary. So I went and I... <clears throat> I made my own paint, you know, with calcium carbonate. And I went and I got a color that I thought looked like terracotta, but it's a little orange. So what I had to do was I had to mix some, uh, I mixed some burnt sienna with it to make it just a little bit deeper because this was a little bit orange for me. So that's what we're going to do now. Oh no, you know what we're going to do first? 
because how are you going to get your little shepherd's hook through there? How are you going to do that? Here's how. I'm going to take my glue gun nozzle and I'm going to poke it straight through here. Okay. Hi, Sheila. Oh, I got all kinds of stuff going on, honey. So this is a nice size. I'm going to take this and I'm going to poke it right through the middle. Right through the middle of my casting. There we go, just like that, okay? And if you're quick, you can get that little piece off of there so it's not, so it's not a, a bump. So the back is still nice and flat. And now we have a hole. How about that? Just wanna make sure that it's nice and smooth. There, so now this will hang on here. It's hard to show you because of the way it's and I think that these hang crooked almost always like when you see pictures of them they're never perfectly straight so I don't even worry about that. They have like a little, a little bit of a tilt to them. Hi, Laura. Hi, Cheryl. They have a little bit of a tilt to them, but that's okay. All right, so we've got our piece and we've made a hole. Hi, Lynn. Now I'm going to take some of this paint that's just a little too orange. I think it's a little too orange. And I'm going to add a little bit of this uh, burnt sienna to it just to kind of tone it down a little bit. I thought I was getting the right, the right blend, but I wasn't. But that's what other paints are for, right? <laughs> that's what acrylic paints for. So you can get other colors from your chalk paint. At least that's the way I do it. Okay. So now I'm going to take and I'm just going to mix this in here. See how it gets just a little bit darker. So it's a little bit darker, more of a, see the difference, more of a terracotta color. So through the magic of television, we already have one. It's the same exact one. It's got the hole. It's painted, but it's painted with this real orangey stuff. So I'm going to give it a coat of this darker, um, more terracotta. Now, I don't want a ton of paint around like these flowers and stuff. I don't want it puddling. So I'm digging out a lot of that paint. I don't want a lot of paint around there because that's where we want our kind of our whitewash to be able to settle back into there. So I'm just digging that out so it's not full of terracotta paint. Hi, Suzanne. I'm just making sure. Okay. That looks good. That makes me happy. Okay. Now we've got our little piece and it's all painted. Now I'm going to give it a, um, thank you, Suzanne, for sharing. I appreciate that. Mary, does the mold eventually harden or does it rem remain flexible? It remains somewhat flexible. Like here's one that's done. It's pretty flexible. 
But what I like about it is um, it's weather resistant. Like you can put these outside. You're never going to break down. If you're drying with a, a heat embossing gun, stay way far back, okay? Because you'll melt the mold. I want this nice and dry because then I'm going to give it a whitewash and uh, make it look like terracotta. You know, where it's all um, calcified, is that what you call it? When the water gets, it, like turns white after it's been out in the elements and stuff. It's probably like the salt in the water that makes that happen. I don't know. <laughs> don't quote me. <laughs> I'm not, not a scientist. Hi, Christina. Hi, Shauna. Okay. Now I'm going to take plain old cream colored paint. This is the paint that I make myself. Okay. It's linen ruffle. I'm going to take a brush. I'm going to put some on my on a plate. Calcium in the water. Yes, something like that. Hi, Sandra. Okay. I'm going to take some of my white paint and put it here. I don't need a lot. Okay. Just like that. And that that's probably even too much. I'm going to make it very wet. The spritzer bottle. It's about super, super wet. And I'm going to brush across this. I want the white to settle down into all of the spaces. I like uh, where we would want, and go around your sides, where we would want antiquing gel. Kind of that that theory you want the white to get down into all of the nooks and crannies okay then i'm going to take a paper towel a damp paper towel like that and i'm just i'm going to give it a gentle dab okay so that looks really good. But then I'm going to come and I'm going to spray water. I'm going to mist water right onto this. Like that. Shake it down a little bit. Like that. This is what I'm going for. I'm going to come and I'm going to just kind of tap across here a little bit. Put some back in there. I might even take my finger and kind of. What I want is for the white to lay down in those recessed parts. Okay. You can take it and you can tap it like that. You can tap it like this because it's very, very wet. Okay. Very, very wet. Don't want a ton of white across here because that's where we're going to stamp. I want to be able to see that. So that looks good. We've got a lot of um, a lot of white. See, it looks like terracotta, right? That's what I tell myself. <laughs> Just like that. I'm gonna dry that. Hi, Dorothy. This will take a little bit longer to dry because it's actually puddled in those recesses, and that's okay. You can tap like that and get it to kind of run off. Doesn't that look just like terracotta? 
I think it is. No, Dorothy, I used, oh, come on, Dorothy. I used, um, hot glue. It started out looking like that, Dorothy. Right over here, I want a little bit more. So you can you can just kind of dab it in with your brush if you need to. Yeah, look, you guys, it's just like terracotta. Ah, is that the cool? Here's a little too white, so I'm just going to take and I'm going to just kind of wipe off the, the face of it. Just a little bit. There. Looks really good. Very happy with that. I'd like to have a little bit more of the situation here. There. Yeah, that's what I wanted. And then you can see I just use my fingers. <laughs> I'm just drying that. I want that to be nice and dry. Staying way far back because I don't want to melt my I don't want to melt my piece. This will melt. Okay, so there's our there's our piece. Keep your white paint because you're going to want to use it later. So there's our piece, and now I'm going to stamp Jardine across the front, which is um, spit it out. It is garden in French. Okay, I'm going to take a new brush because I want full strength paint on this. So I stamp these one at a time. I have a five letter word, J A R D I N. I have a six letter word, so J A R. So I know R is my middle letter. So here, here's how I space. Well, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So here's dead center. I know that's dead center. So if I put the R dead center, that wouldn't work out. But if I put it right to the left of that, that would be good. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to take some white paint just like this and I'm going to gently dab it onto my I would see the top of my head but can't be able to So there's our R I always wipe paint off of stamps immediately, and especially my paint, because my paint does have some latex in it. A true chalk paint does not. You probably wouldn't have to be so, you know, mindful of that, but my paint is not pure chalk paint. So, um, yeah, I wipe it off right away. So now we need the A. Same thing, just a bit of paint, not a ton, because you don't want it. You don't want it falling down into the, you know, you want the paint just to lay on the top of the stamp. There's our A. Wipe that off right away. We had more fun with this little stamp set. Where's our J? Where's our J? I'm just tapping very gently, tapping the paint onto the top.
Now, I take one of these little eyelash brushes and I'm going to touch these up a little bit because then Jay got kind of wonky. So I'm putting them in that kind of wetter paint and I'm just kind of fleshing out this letter so it looks more like a J. And then this looks more like an A. And the wet paint kind of moves a little better, so you can kind of lay it on there and let it dry. So there's the JAR so far. Now I need, let's dry that. Could you spell the word out and stamp it all at once? You could. Here's why I don't. I don't think that. My personal preference is to have my letters a little bit closer. When you take all these little letters and like if I spelled out uh, Jardine, there's so much space in between the letters. It doesn't look like a real word to me. So I don't care for the way that looks. J-A-R-D. And I've tried it both ways. And it, it's just it's a personal preference. If you don't care that there's a lot of spacing, uh, try it. If you don't care that there's a lot of spacing, then go for it, but I care. I, I like my letters to be a little closer together. Yipes, that got very wet. Our D. Here's our I. Hi, Judy. And then we have an M. Goes that way. Okay. Perfect. I'm going to touch up that eye because that got a little faint, but I can easily do that with my little eyeliner brushes that I have out here just for this purpose. Little super, super fine detail work. Excuse the top of my head. Poor all. Oliver is taking something for that cough, so hopefully we should give him some relief. He just went to the vet this week. His heart's fine. His lungs are clear. They can't find anything in his throat. They do not know why he's coughing like that. And he's been doing it for years, but it's getting worse. I just, I like these to be pretty bright, so I go over them a couple of times. If they're not perfect, don't worry about that. I'm going to dry these. Dry that. 
and then there's a little um there's a little <laughs> it's a period is what it is it's a little tiny dot can you see it i'm taking i'm going to put some paint on that just on the top of it like that. Wipe the paint off. I'm back in with my little brush and try to keep it a circle. There. How cute is that? Oh, Sheila, I know. You know, Oliver has been, just the last six months, I've really noticed he's really slowed down. He's um, he just turned 11. But his heart and his lungs are still good, so. But his hips hurt, you know, you can tell. He, he won't jump up on stuff like he used to. So I'm just going to dry this. Now, I'm going to take a very fine, not fine, I'm going to take a paintbrush that has a, I just had it. Okay, there it is. It's flat. You see how it's flat? And I'm going to put chalk paint, probably full strength chalk paint on it. And, uh, and I want to drag it flat across some of these places that where the flowers are didn't get didn't get the memo that they're supposed to be like this corner here leaving my brush flat and just catching the high points maybe across there across there here's some flowers here just dragging it across like a dry brush almost. These flowers here need some help. See how that makes those pop? So that's all I'm doing right now, just kind of making those little flowers kind of pop a little bit. A little bit on this end, a little bit on this end. Such a pretty, uh, such a pretty mold. A little bit on the ends. There it is. I think it looks great. Yeah, Judy, he's my one, two, three. He's my fourth Cocker Spaniel. Fourth and last. <laughs> I think I'm done. So the back, I'm taking the, I thought I was taking the real wet stuff. It doesn't matter because I'm going to spray it anyway. So I'm just taking and going like this. And then I'll spray it. And then I'll just kind of dab it off a little bit. When you see it from the back, it looks terracotta light. Look how cute is that? So sweet. Of course, I can't leave well enough alone. You know me. It's a little bit of white right there. Some white on this line right there.
Yeah. I'm going to leave well enough alone, you guys. There it is. So, here's one that's already finished that I did, and there's one that I just made. I think they're just so charming, and they go on these little shepherd's hooks. Listen, I, I bought some, some of these little shepherd hooks, and they gave, they gave me 50 of them. So, um, what I'm going to do is, if you buy a conservatory mold today, I'll throw a couple of these in there with your order, okay? Um, so you can make these. I feel like I need a little bit. Oh, I can't leave well enough. A little bit more white there. So you can find the conservatory labels at the shop.com. I'll put a link in the title. Because I don't know what I'm going to do with 50 of them. Probably, these are probably the only two I'm going to use. So as long as they last, I'll uh, I'll give you a couple when you order. And an outline and everything. I am going to seal this. Mary, I found the shepherd's hooks on uh, Amazon, and they're they're in my Amazon shop. You need 50 of them. They're in there. <laughs> and they were hard to find. They're, they're hard to find. It's hard to find this exact. Um, there's some, uh, most of them go sideways, which I, I didn't want. I didn't want them to go sideways. I wanted them to go, you know, hang from the front. So they were hard to find, which is why I bought 50. Because um, I wanted them. I didn't care that it cost that much. That's what I wanted. So I bought 50 of them. But they're cute. Cute, cute, cute. I'll get a great picture of this. I'm going to seal this with um, polyvine. Everything's nice and dry. How cute are those, huh? I just stuck in your. Mine will probably go on my little plants in my uh, in my kitchen. I have plants in my kitchen. Uh, here's my polyvine. My soft brush. And this is satin, so it gives it kind of a nice little little sheen. It almost looks like um like glazed clay. You see, there's like just a bit of a sheen to it. Yeah. Yeah, it's very cool. I will do the edges. And when the front dries, I'll do the back. There we go. That's it. Pretty, um, pretty simple. Yeah, I, Cheryl. I would think these would fly out of a booth because I think they're so cute and you can see they're really quick and it costs nothing to make. I mean, I half a glue stick and a little time. Yeah. The most expensive part are these uh, shepherd's hooks, but if you're selling them, you can, you know, certainly justify that cost. Yeah. These are darling. The sisters did them in black and white, which is also very, very cute. Black and white, don't, don't overlook that option because that's really, really cute as well. And you could put in, you know, you could put rosemary, chives, whatever. You know, I just, you know me, I'm like, I like the French stuff. So I stuck with them. So there they are. Look how cute. How cute are those? Love them. I'll probably make this these even wider 
because um, I see that this is quite white and I like it. So I'm just going to come and I'll do it right over the sealer. Trying to stay just on the tops. I got away from me. So our little spring academy is going very, very well. I'm very happy with the progress that um, that I've made. I have three full classes already up and going. Um, any product that you buy from me from the spring release includes a free class. And I've constructed it so I use several products in one class. So you might not have bought, say, the veranda stamp, but because you bought the patiche stamp, you're going to see what I did with the veranda stamp. So there's lots of them. Um, I don't know what you call it, crossover, <laughs> which is, yeah, yeah, that's better. A little bit wider. Oh, you're working on your book, Cheryl? Good for you. Good for you. Did you guys see my, uh, my king that I made? <laughs> I see the best. This cracks me up. I think this is hysterical. <laughs> king of the castle. A great Father's Day idea, I think, yeah. It could not be cuter. And the veranda stamp makes it look like he's standing in front of a, one of those uh, English, you know, paned windows. Yeah, I just loved him. I had more fun with him. I giggled the whole time I made him. Look at that face. <laughs> okay, so I think we're done. I think we're done with this. I'll seal the back of it and um, I'll take some great pictures. If you want to pick up the conservatory mold today, I'll throw in a couple of um, shepherd's hooks. If not, if you want to buy 50 of them, <laughs> you can go on my, on my, uh, in my Amazon store and pick them up. Um, let's see what else do I have to tell you. Um, I'm beginning to work on another free class with this mold it's going to uh invitation only it's going to be a little bit different but it's it's going to be a father's day theme um and that is it so i will um i'll see you soon i don't know when um i'm out to jump on i'll definitely be here next tuesday tag along tuesday i don't know what we're going to do yet but uh, there's so many things to do it's not like a like I won't have something to do because I will. There's so many things to do. And that's it. So there's my things. I'll get a really good picture of them for you. So you have that for reference. And I thank you for my orders will be here today and tomorrow. How do I find the classes? Sheila, I recognize your name and I believe you've already been added to the classes. As soon as I get an order and I see that you've ordered something that has a class, I go put you in the class right away on your Facebook page in the little magnifying glass or the search bar. If you're on your phone, there's a magnifying glass. If you're on your laptop, there's a search bar. Type in the name of the item that you ordered. If you ordered Viridus, type in that. If you ordered Pastiche, type in that. If you ordered Lover of Flowers, type in that. And because you're in the group, the group will come up and you can just click on it and go there. I'll look into it. Um, when I get off of here, Sheila, but I recognize your last name, so I know that you're in the classes already, but I'll follow up with you after. Uh... Uh, no, Christina, there's three classes that are out. I'll check. I'll check and make sure you're in everything that you need to be in. Okay, sweetie. Um, thanks so much for being here, you guys. I will see you again very soon. Bye.